Hey guys, today I will be doing a sexual assault and harassment awareness presentation brought to you by the Citizenship Development Committee of Lowood Leadership. We are doing this because it is a very important topic to learn about and April is the month of sexual assault and harassment awareness. So first of all, what is sexual harassment? Sexual harassment is unwelcome words or behaviors that are sexual or sex-based in nature from students or adults of the same gender or not that interfere with your ability to learn, study, work, or participate in school or work activities. The harassment can be in the form of words that arrange something visual or some form of unwanted physical touching that is sexual or targets you for your gender. 97% of women in the UK have been sexually harassed, found by a study done by you and women. Examples of sexual harassment. Sexual harassment can occur in your school, place of employment, or even public spaces. Examples of sexual harassment include catcalling, inappropriate touching, making sexually explicit comments, and sexually suggestive gestures. The many forms of sexual harassment can be seen in this graphic that you can see at the right of the screen. What is sexual assault? The term sexual assault refers to sexual contact or behavior that occurs without explicit consent of the victim. Some forms of sexual assault include attempted rape, fondling or unwanted sexual touching, forcing a victim to perform sexual acts, or penetration of a victim's body, also known as rape. One in five women. 23.1% of undergraduate female students experience rape or sexual assault through physical force, violence, or incapacitation. This was a study done by the Association of American Universities in 2015. So what is force? Force doesn't always refer to physical pressure. Perpetrators may use emotional coercion, psychological force, or manipulation to coerce a victim into non-consexual sex. Some perpetrators will use threats to force a victim to comply, such as threatening to hurt the victim or their family or other intimidation tactics. Who are the perpetrators? The majority of perpetrators are someone known to the victim. Approximately 8 out of 10 sexual assaults are committed by someone known to the victim, such as in the case of intimate partner sexual violence or acquaintance rape. Learn the facts about sexual violence. One in two women have experienced sexual violence other than rape in their lifetime. One in five men have experienced sexual violence other than rape in their lifetime. Fewer than 5% of completed or attempted rapes against college women were reported to law enforcement. One in five women have experienced completed or attempted rape in their lives. 41% of women report experience physically aggressive street harassment. One in three women experience physical or sexual violence by an intimate partner. Women have a 50 to 95% chance of developing post-traumatic stress disorder after being raped. One in six boys are sexually abused before the age of 16. Only 26.2% of men who experienced childhood sexual abuse disclosed at the time of the abuse. 18% of men reported experiencing verbal street harassment. One in 67 men in the United States have experienced raped or attempted rape. 67.5% of instances of rape are estimated to go unreported. Among college women, 9 out of 10 victims of sexual assault knew the person who sexually assaulted them. Sexual violence thrives when it is not taken seriously and victim blaming goes unchecked. Use your voice to prevent it. Staying safe. Remind yourself that this isn't your fault. You did not do anything wrong. It is the person who is pressuring you who is the responsible one. Trust your gut. Don't feel obligated to do anything that you don't feel that it's safe or that you don't want to do. Have a code word. Develop a code with friends or family that means I'm uncomfortable or I need help so that you can text them rapidly and easily. It's okay to lie. If you are concerned about angering or upsetting this person, you can lie or make an excuse to create a safe exit for yourself. Think of an escape route. If you had to leave quickly, how would you do it? Locate the windows, doors, or any other means of exiting the situation if, unfortunately, you find yourself in that situation. Steps that you can take to prevent sexual assault. The key to keeping your friends safe is learning how to intervene in a way that fits the situation and your comfort level. Having this knowledge on hand can give you the confidence to step in when something isn't right. Stepping in can make all the difference, but it should never put your own safety at risk. 
create a distraction. Do what you can to interrupt the situation. A distraction can give the person at risk a chance to get to a safe place. Ask directly. Talk directly to the person who might be in trouble. Refer to an authority. Sometimes the safest way to intervene is to refer to a neutral party with the, with the authority to change the situation, like an RA or security guard. Enlist others. It can be intimidating to approach a situation alone. Enlist another person to support you. For more information, visit rain.org slash safety dash prevention. Here are some resources if you ever need anyone to talk to or if you ever want to find more information about sexual assault. Or if you know anyone who has experienced sexual assault or harassment and if they need help or anyone to talk to. Please remember, Bobcats, that you should always be kind to everyone because you never know what they're going through or what they've been through. And you have to be especially respectful and kind and helpful to those who have been victims of sexual assault and sexual harassment. Thank you.